In the sprawling cosmos where civilizations thrived on countless worlds under the watchful gaze of a million stars, humanity carved out its place among the galactic populace. The year 2540 marked Earth's robust integration into the Galactic Federation, an alliance that united diverse species in a collective pursuit of harmony and progress. Among Earth's contributions to this interstellar assembly was a cadre of super-soldiers, humans enhanced through cutting-edge science and rigorous training to serve as protectors of peace and enforcers of justice. John Carter, one of these elite warriors, stood apart even among his distinguished peers. His physical prowess, honed to perfection, was matched only by his strategic acumen and indomitable will. Yet, it was his partnership with Duke, a Belgian Malinois of unparalleled intelligence and loyalty, that truly defined him. Duke was more than a pet. He was a comrade-in-arms, equipped with genetic enhancements that augmented his natural abilities, making him an invaluable asset in the field. Together, John and Duke were stationed on Zephyr, a frontier world that exemplified the challenges and opportunities of the galactic frontier. Their mission was to safeguard the burgeoning human colony, a beacon of Earth's expansionist aspirations, and a testament to humanity's resilience. The tranquility of their assignment was shattered when Zorlachians, a species notorious for their predatory nature and disdain for galactic law, launched a brazen attack on the colony. These aliens, resembling nightmares conjured from the darkest recesses of imagination, sought to undermine the fragile peace that had been painstakingly built. The assault was sudden and brutal, with the Zorlachians unleashing their full fury upon the unsuspecting colonists. John and Duke sprang into action, their bond and training put to the ultimate test. Together they navigated the chaos, their every move a blend of precision and instinct, as they sought to repel the invaders and protect the innocent. In the heat of battle, Duke demonstrated courage and loyalty that transcended the bounds of ordinary companionship. He intercepted a lethal attack aimed at John, saving his partner at the cost of his own life. The moment Duke fell, a part of John shattered, an unspoken pact of brotherhood cruelly broken by alien hostility. The aftermath of the attack left the colony in ruins, its inhabitants mourning the loss and devastation. But for John, the grief was personal and profound. Duke had been more than a fellow soldier. He was a friend, a part of John's soul, now cruelly ripped away. Seized by a maelstrom of grief and rage, John resolved to pursue the Zorlachians, to avenge Duke's death, and to ensure that such a tragedy would never befall another. His mission was no longer just about duty. It was a vendetta, a crusade fueled by the memory of his fallen comrade. As John set out on his quest, the galaxy watched, unaware that the actions of one man and the memory of one dog would soon unfold into a saga of vengeance and valor that would echo through the stars. John Carter's transformation from a disciplined super-soldier to a vengeful hunter began under the desolate skies of Zephyr. The planet, with its rugged terrain and harsh climates, was indifferent to the human sorrow and rage simmering in John's heart. Armed with an arsenal befitting a one-man army and driven by the raw pain of Duke's loss, John embarked on his relentless pursuit of the Zorlachians. His quest led him into the lawless expanses of Zephyr's outer territories, regions where the Federation's influence waned and where outlaws and renegades found sanctuary. The Zorlachians, aware of John's pursuit, had retreated into these wilds, seeking refuge among the like-minded denizens of the galaxy's underbelly. John's reputation as a super-soldier was well known, and his arrival did not go unnoticed. Whispers of his presence spread like wildfire, stirring unease among the outlaws and drawing intrigued glances from those who recognized the insignia of the Galactic Federation. Yet John was no longer the emblematic peacekeeper. He was an avenger, his eyes burning with a resolve that was both terrifying and awe-inspiring. His first encounter with the Zorlachians since Duke's death was swift and brutal. In a dimly lit outpost, where the air was thick with the stench of illicit substances and the murmurs of shady deals, John faced off against a contingent of the alien marauders. They were formidable, their exoskeletons deflecting standard blaster fire and their limbs wielding weapons forged from the advanced metallurgy of their homeworld. But John was undeterred. 
His enhancements allowed him to perceive and react with superhuman speed and precision. Each movement was calculated, each strike lethal. He dismantled his adversaries with a methodical efficiency, his actions not just a display of skill, but a message. The hunter had become the hunted. The skirmish at the outpost was just the beginning. Word of John's vendetta spread throughout the frontier, reaching the ears of both sympathizers and those who sought to capitalize on the conflict. Some saw him as a hero, a symbol of retribution in a galaxy where justice was often elusive. Others perceived him as a threat, a destabilizing force that could upend the fragile balance of power in the region. As John tracked his prey across Zephyr, the Zorlakians began to realize the gravity of their mistake. They had awakened a force of nature, a warrior whose capabilities were matched only by his determination to avenge his fallen companion. Battles raged across desolate canyons and through abandoned settlements, each confrontation bringing John closer to his ultimate quarry, the Zorlakian warlord who had orchestrated the attack on the colony. Through it all, the memory of Duke was ever present, fueling John's resolve. The bond they had shared, built on trust, loyalty, and countless shared battles, was now John's source of strength and his guiding light through the darkness of his crusade. He was no longer just fighting for himself or even for Duke. He was fighting for every soul who had suffered under the yoke of tyranny, every companion lost in the struggle against the darkness that lurked at the galaxy's fringes. John Carter's journey was far from over, but his legend was already being written in the annals of the frontier, a tale of loss, vengeance, and unwavering courage in the face of insurmountable odds. The pursuit had narrowed down to the desolate expanse of Zephyr's Maelstrom Desert, a vast, unforgiving terrain where the winds howled with the voices of the lost. Here, amidst the towering dunes and treacherous quicksands, John Carter prepared to confront the Zorlakian warlord, a behemoth known as Graxus. Graxus, whose name was whispered in fear across a hundred worlds, was the mastermind behind the ruthless raids, including the one that claimed Duke. John's advance had not gone unnoticed. Graxus, surrounded by his elite guards, awaited the human's arrival with a mix of anticipation and contempt. The Zorlakian saw John as a mere nuisance, an insignificant blip in his campaign of terror. Yet, as the human super-soldier approached, even the warlord's cold, alien heart felt a flicker of doubt. The confrontation was not merely a battle but an epic showdown, a clash of wills as much as strength. John, Armed with high-tech weaponry and driven by a raw, almost primal need for vengeance, faced Graxus, whose massive frame was armored in the natural exoskeleton characteristic of his species, making him a daunting opponent. The battle commenced with a fury that echoed across the desolate landscape. John's initial strikes were swift and precise, designed to test the warlord's defenses. Graxus responded with brute force his powerful limbs capable of crushing stone, swinging wildly to crush his human adversary. But John was no ordinary opponent. His enhanced reflexes allowed him to dodge the lethal blows, while his tactical acumen helped him identify the weak points in Graxus's armor. Each exchange was a dance of death, a symphony of clashing metal and energy blasts under the watchful eyes of Zephyr's twin moons. As the fight wore on, it became clear that this was more than a personal vendetta for John. It was a demonstration of humanity's resilience, a testament to their refusal to be cowed by alien aggression. The super-soldier's relentless assault began to wear down Graxus's defenses, each blow a tribute to Duke and the countless others who had suffered at the hands of the Zorlakians. In the climactic moments, as the two warriors stood battered and bruised, John mustered the last of his strength for a final, decisive strike. With a cry that carried all his pain and anger, he delivered a blow that penetrated Graxus's armor, bringing the warlord to his knees. The victory was not just John's, but a victory for all of Zephyr, a signal that the reign of terror was over. The Zorlakian forces, witnessing the fall of their leader, scattered, their resolve shattered. John stood victorious, his heart heavy with the cost of his quest, but buoyed by the knowledge that his actions had forged a path toward peace. As he stood amidst the ruins of the battlefield, John's thoughts turned to Duke, the companion who had stood by his side through countless dangers. In the silent communion with the memory of his fallen friend, 
John felt a sense of closure, a feeling that Duke's spirit was at peace, knowing that their shared battle had been won. The clash in the Maelstrom Desert would be remembered as a turning point, a moment when one man, fueled by the bond with his companion, stood against the darkness and emerged victorious. John Carter, the super soldier, had become a legend, not just for his prowess in battle, but for the depth of his loyalty and the strength of his character. In the aftermath of the monumental battle with Graxus, John Carter became a figure of mythic proportions across the Galactic Federation. His victory was not merely a personal triumph, but a beacon of hope for those who had felt the oppressive weight of the Zorlachians. Yet amidst the accolades and the widespread recognition, John found himself at a crossroads, grappling with a sense of purpose now that his quest for vengeance had reached its end. The Galactic Federation, recognizing John's unique skills and the profound impact of his actions, extended an offer that would utilize his capabilities for the greater good. They proposed that John lead a specialized task force designed to intervene in conflicts where conventional diplomacy failed, a unit that would operate at the fringes of Federation space to uphold peace and justice. John, still carrying the memories of Duke and the emotional scars of his vendetta, saw in this offer a chance to channel his experiences and skills into a cause that transcended personal grief. He accepted, driven by a newfound resolve to ensure that no other being would endure the pain he had faced. The formation of this task force marked a new chapter in John's life. He became a mentor and leader to a diverse group of soldiers, each selected for their unique abilities and potential. Under his guidance, they transformed into a cohesive unit, embodying the ideals of unity and resilience that John had come to represent. Their missions took them to distant worlds and into the heart of conflicts that threatened the fragile peace of the galaxy. With each successful operation, John's legend grew, but so did the sense of fulfillment he found in this new role. He was no longer the lone Avenger, but the leader of a team that stood as a shield against the darkness threatening the cosmos. Through it all, the memory of Duke remained a constant presence, a reminder of the values John strove to uphold. His bond with Duke had been forged in the crucible of battle, but its legacy was now manifest in the lives he saved and the peace he helped secure. John's journey had transformed him from a soldier defined by vengeance to a guardian of the galaxy, a protector who wielded his strength and his scars as tools to forge a better future. In this new mission, he found not just redemption, but a deeper understanding of his place in the vast tapestry of the universe. As he stood aboard his ship, gazing out at the stars that stretched into infinity, John Carter knew that Duke's spirit was with him, guiding him on this new path. The super soldier who had avenged his fallen companion was now the vanguard of hope in a galaxy where light and darkness waged an eternal struggle. And in this role, John found not only a tribute to Duke's memory, but a continuation of the bond they had shared, an enduring legacy that would inspire countless others across the stars. John Carter's transformation from a vengeful warrior to a guardian of peace had resonated across the Galactic Federation, turning him into a symbol of hope and resilience. His task force, renowned for its daring missions and unwavering commitment to justice, had become a cornerstone of the Federation's efforts to maintain stability in a universe brimming with unpredictability. As the years passed, the tales of John's exploits, both past and present, spread far beyond the military circles, igniting a flame of inspiration among civilians and soldiers alike. He was no longer just a super-soldier. He had become an ideal a paragon of the virtues that the Federation aspired to uphold. John's leadership style, marked by empathy, strategic brilliance, and an unshakable sense of duty, had a profound impact on those under his command. He fostered a culture of respect, camaraderie, and selflessness that transformed his unit into one of the most effective forces in the galaxy. The soldiers who served with him were not just followers. They were adherents to a cause, emboldened by the legacy of a man who had turned personal loss into a universal mission. Despite his achievements, John remained humble, always attributing his successes to his team and the lessons he had learned during his darkest moments. He often spoke of Duke, not with a sense of loss, but with reverence, sharing how the bond he shared with his companion had shaped his principles and his path. 
The impact of John's work was most evident in the peace that slowly yet steadily spread across the sectors where once turmoil had reigned. Worlds once marred by conflict began to thrive, their citizens emboldened by the protection and hope provided by John and his team. His approach, blending tactical genius with a genuine concern for life, set a new standard for military operations within the Federation. In the twilight of his career, John chose to step away from the front lines, leaving his task force in the capable hands of those he had mentored. His departure was marked by a galaxy-wide celebration, honoring not just a soldier, but a hero who had transcended his own narrative to become a part of the Federation's ethos. Retiring to a quiet corner of the galaxy, John found solace in a serene world that bore a striking resemblance to Zephyr, where his journey had taken a pivotal turn. Here, he dedicated his time to chronicling his experiences, offering his insights and reflections as a guide for future generations. John's legacy lived on, not just in the stories told or the peace achieved, but in the hearts of those he had touched. He had shown that even in the vastness of space, the bond between two beings could ignite a force capable of transforming the galaxy. His tale, interwoven with Duke's memory, became a timeless narrative of loyalty, courage, and the enduring fight for justice in the ever-unfolding saga of the cosmos. John Carter's days of solitude were reflective, filled with the tranquility of a life once consumed by tumult. His residence, perched on a gentle hill overlooking a serene valley, became a place of pilgrimage for those seeking wisdom from the legendary super-soldier who had once turned the tide of galactic conflicts. Yet for John, this period was not about basking in past glories but about introspection and forging a deeper connection with the universe he had fought to protect. As seasons changed on this peaceful world, John found himself delving into pursuits he had once set aside for the demands of duty. He explored the arts, delved into philosophy, and engaged with the local community, sharing stories of the cosmos that sparked wonder and aspiration in the eyes of his listeners. In every tale, Duke's memory shone brightly, a testament to the enduring bond they shared. John's influence extended beyond his immediate surroundings. Through his writings and teachings, he became a mentor in absentia to countless individuals across the Federation, from young cadets to seasoned officers, all drawn to the principles he embodied. His life story, intertwined with lessons of compassion, resilience, and moral fortitude, became a beacon guiding the Federation's journey through the stars. Yet even as his legend continued to grow, John remained grounded, often seen gazing at the night sky, where stars told stories of ancient times and distant worlds. He found a profound sense of connection in the cosmos, a reminder of the cyclical nature of existence and the small yet significant place he occupied within it. In his final years, John embarked on one last mission, not one of conflict but of legacy. He established a foundation dedicated to fostering peace and understanding across the galaxy, focusing on conflict resolution, cultural exchange, and the nurturing of bonds between diverse species. It was his final gift to the galaxy, a continuation of the work he and Duke had begun on the battlefields of Zephyr. When John Carter's journey came to its natural end, the galaxy mourned, but it also celebrated. Memorials were held on countless worlds, honoring not just a soldier but a visionary who had seen beyond the immediate horizon to the vast potential of a united galaxy. John's final resting place, beside a tranquil lake on the world he had come to call home, became a site of reflection for those who sought to honor his memory. A simple monument stood there, bearing the names of John and Duke side by side, as they had always been. It was a symbol of the unbreakable bond between them, a bond that had inspired a galaxy. In the end, John Carter's legacy was not solely about the battles won or the enemies vanquished, but about the hearts and minds he had touched, the peace he had forged, and the path he had illuminated for the future. His story, interwoven with Duke's, would endure as a guiding light. A reminder that even in the vast expanse of the universe, the strength of one's spirit and the depth of one's connections could shape destinies and echo through the ages.